What's going on everyone? I'm Devin. Today's video is going to focus on the injury rates of military members as they complete their initial training. I'm going to be going over a few studies and providing the information from them and then formulating my own opinions at the end about how I interpret those studies. A study published in 2013 by Peter Lisman and colleagues that overviews the association of injuries and the components of the Marine Corps Physical Fitness Test, PFT, self-reported exercise and injury, and functional movement screening. This study took over 800 officer candidates going through the 6 or 10 week officer candidate school. The candidates performed a PFT and a functional movement screening within their first week of training. That functional movement screening included the squat, the forward lunge, the hurdle step, shoulder mobility, active straight leg raise, push-up, and rotary stability. A questionnaire was also given to the candidates to allow them to include their prior fitness activity before starting the course. This study, in my opinion, ended up having fairly predictable results. As shown here, the members who had slower run times and lower FMS scores had a higher risk of any injury or traumatic injury, and the slower run time were at a higher risk of overuse injuries. Notably, the long course trainees had a higher risk of injury as compared to the short course. Members who reported prior lower limb injury were at higher risk of injury. Candidates also showed higher risks of injury with lower general sports and exercise and fewer months of running before the course. Injury risk was not associated with run frequency, weight training frequency, or duration. This final table shows the multivariate analysis results. The breakdown shows that many factors can contribute to an increased risk of injury when compared to candidates that did not score low on their run times or functional movement screening they were calculated to be a 4.19, 3.77, and 1.85 times more likely to experience any traumatic or overuse injuries respectively. The main thing that I took from this study was that the lack of movement ability as well as your low aerobic fitness could increase your risk of injury potentially up to the previously stated 4.19 times that of someone who has a better aerobic fitness as well as better movement. Similarly, a study published in 2010 by Joseph Knappick and colleagues overviewed the effect on injuries of assigning running shoes based on foot shape in Air Force basic training. The primary focus of this study was on the shoe distribution based on the foot shape. However, the secondary portion of the study was to overview the incidence of injury in Air Force basic training. In this study, they state, the present study is the first to examine risk factors for injuries in US Air Force BMT. The number of risk factors previously identified in Army and Marine basic training were also established here. Higher injury risk was associated with lower aerobic fitness as found in studies of Army and Marine basic training and cigarette smoking as found in Army studies. Lower levels of muscular endurance were also associated with injury among the men. Muscular endurance trends were similar among women, although they did not reach statistical significance. This study did not show that questionnaire responses were associated with injury unlike the previous Marine Corps study at least among the male candidates in the Air Force study. However, women who had been jogging or running for a longer time or jogging or running more frequently had a reduced risk of injury. The final study is one that I used previously based on running mileage and total movement mileage. And I talked about that in a previous video that I'll link down in the description box below. The study by Trank and colleagues ended up showing that members in the poor slash fair or good fitness levels as assessed at the beginning of training were more likely to develop 
injuries, especially when running a total distance of greater than 25 miles throughout training. That injury risk was calculated at a 1.6 or 60% more likely to sustain an injury during training. So at the end of the day, what conclusions can we draw from the information from these studies? All of these studies seem to point towards those that have a lower overall fitness level have an increased risk of injury, specifically when going from an untrained state into a training state that might be more stressful and strenuous than they're used to. This thus potentially increasing their rate of injury. Now these studies might not transfer directly into the active military force. However, there are many people that I would assume spend a large majority of the time between PT tests or fitness assessments, PFTs, whatever you want to call them, not doing any workouts at all. And then the last little bit of time, four to six weeks before their PT test, they start into more strenuous workouts that are similar to an untrained individual going into a basic training type scenario. The lack of training and fitness before starting this strenuous abrupt training cycle is in my opinion what leads to the increased risk of injury. Spending that potential five month time period in between tests, not doing anything, and then that harsh impact of starting fitness does not allow the body the time to adapt to the stressors to help repair itself and build it stronger in order to perform well. There is a potential that the ligaments are the main cause of this as they tend to adapt slower to new stressors. So things like plantar fasciitis and joint problems could all potentially be caused because of this increase in activity without the body being able to adapt. And those members that fall into this six month category are considered satisfactory by the Air Force as far as fitness goes. If they perform better on these tests, they would fall into the excellent category that would have them test once every 12 months. That differential to me means that these people that are in that satisfactory window above the minimum passing score, but below the score needed to reach an excellent fall into this between poor and good categories of fitness and that they are more likely to have injuries because of this. This is why I'm trying to instill a minimum kind of fitness track that people can do with running once per week. It's not a lot of work to do, but it does provide some movement and helps the body remain used to that activity level. So in those four to six weeks before your PT test, when you ramp up your training schedule and you're training several times a week potentially, your body isn't going to be as foreign to those stressors and you're going to be able to adapt better because your body is already at a higher level of fitness to begin with. And I'm trying to do it by using myself and only running once per week and not deviating out of that to try and prove a point that people don't have to spend tons of time working out to be fit and to help reduce their risk of injury. I run once per week and I do three weight training sessions per week. That's it. It takes about five hours of my time. It's not very long. And I think functionally it's going to be good enough to maintain fitness over the course of six months. And this increase of base fitness level should help prevent injuries in those four to six weeks before their tests, which will allow them to not end up injuring themselves and not needing to be on a profile for their PT test, only to spend the next five months after their potentially waste only test to do nothing and then repeat the cycle one month before their next test. Don't do this fitness stuff for me. Don't do it for whatever military branch you're in. 
do it for yourself because you deserve to not be at a higher risk of injury. You deserve to be in good shape, in good health, and good fitness. So those are the conclusions that I drew from these studies. Again, they'll be linked in the description box below. And if you have any comments on them, you want to read them, give me your views, drop them in the comment box down below. And if you like this article review content, uh, again, let me know in the comments below. If you liked it, give it a like. And I'm going to leave you with a little bit of run humor at the end of this. So have a good day, and your mileage may vary.